Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about your brand and what does it say. Spoiler alert, you're not Nike. But if you have a service business in general, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? <clears throat> if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. We've been now doing this. We're going into the seventh year. We're doing this every single week. Every single week. Crazy, right? Absolutely. Uh, a ton of content. Go back and watch. Listen. Anywhere podcasts are found, of course. And uh, leave a review. Share it. Talk about it. Definitely always, always, always appreciate it. But that's what we're doing. Today, I want to talk all about branding. And everybody is worried about branding, especially when they're getting in or starting something or, you know, developing or creating a business. A lot of people always focus on the brand and they focus on the logo. They focus on your colors, right? Uh, our colors are only blue and yellow and we only have... Uh, they focus on all of that. But the interesting thing is they don't focus on what it says almost ever. They don't focus on like what does the branding say. They just focus on it like being a thing. And they assume when you create a business, well, I got to come up with a logo. Like that's everybody's idea first. There's a lot of companies that just don't have logos or their name is the logo. You could develop a logo. Totally cool. But then people really, really, really focus on the logo. That's like the big, big thing. Ooh, which, which logo do you like better? It's like just slightly different. You're thinking too much into it. No one cares as much as you. Now, unpopular opinions, by the way. If you want to yell at me, go ahead and send me an email. That's totally cool. But I always see people get caught up in like, the specifics, I like aesthetics. I think in, especially in branding, in business, and in, in just your overall feel of the company. I love legit, I love it. But I also think that the logo side is a bit confusing to a lot of people. Now, you can go two ways, okay? I'll tell you some of the most famous logos in history, mind you, like the OGs in, 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 in business. The, the originals have very, very simple logos because at the time they were hand drawn. So you didn't have these big things, you know, they didn't have all this stuff. But look at Nike. It's the name and a swoosh. In fact, when Nike came out, uh, it was more of cursive and it looked like it said Mike. And everybody was like, who's Mike? So they changed it a little bit and then there's a swoosh. It's a swoosh now can be a logo, it's its, its own logo. McDonald's, it's an M. It's an M because they had a sign. That was the M. That was their logo. If you even look at the logo and a lot of things for a long time, it had like the, you know, diamond shape to the front. That was because that was how the logos or the signs were made. Right? Look at a lot of the big, big brands. And it's just a simple, simple logo. All it is is to take something and tether it to it so that when you see that logo, you know that that's the company. Now, the thing that people get lost in, especially in small business, is that they assume that the logo matters also because somehow people are gonna associate with logo. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, I know this is a bit of a, uh, I understand. This is, um, this is uh, hip, a bit of a hip hypocrisy, but if you look at WCR's logo, it's just letters, right? It plays off of the Supreme logo to some degree, but it's also more specifically from a movie, but very simple. Now, people wear WCR gear, apparel. We sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of pieces of swag every month, and people wear it. It's phenomenal. But it's this weird, it's a culture thing of like, uh, this is like the cool business in the industry, and that's why I wear it, and it's not to show other people, right? People are not going to be out there wearing your logo to your window cleaning company as much as they may love the window cleaning company that you have, right? So it's not as much that the logo has to inspire or the logo is going to be worn so it has to be on all these things that these people can say, but it has to be something that specifically sets off 
a tone for people. And I have to say, a lot of times people have these logos that talk about um, either all of their services or something specific, and they're missing the point that a logo can be as absolutely simple as a message, right? Your logo could be a picture of whatever the thing is, right? So if you're a, a horse company and your name is Horse Window Cleaner or whatever, your picture is a logo as a horse. But the more important thing in all these logos is its uniform colors, all of that. It's the simplicity because it's got to be something that could be a single color screen print, right? Don't put gradients in anything. Don't do all that. But the logo itself has to say the main thing you do. So if I am horse window cleaning, I have to have my logo and it has to say window cleaning really big and really clear. And people sometimes are like, well, yeah, but I do window cleaning and I do pressure washing, gutter cleaning, and I have to put, yes, okay, I know. But if you say words in the logo or anything about the logo that confuses people, they're not going to instantly know what you do. So a lot of times when you're looking at logos or maybe you're redoing your logo, what does your logo say? Like, what does the logo say? Don't look too much into it. Nike's still there. But if you have a logo that doesn't say anything, then why even have a logo? No one's remembering the logo necessarily. They're letting it connect the dots. But as soon as they see something, if they see window cleaning in it, they know that's what it is. If that's your bread and butter. 80, 70, 60% of your business, 50% of your business is window cleaning. Put window cleaning as the first one. In fact, I know guys that have companies that are called windows only that do almost more pressure washing than window cleaning. That's called windows only. Don't think too much into it, especially when you're getting into it or redesigning or doing any of that stuff. But a big piece is that the feeling somebody gets when they see everything, when they see the branding, when they see the company, when they see the thing, what feeling do they get? And I know you're like, this guy's stupid. He's really looking into this. But let me say, let me say this. If I have a company and it's called XYZ Window Cleaning and the logo is little high-rise buildings, right? Little vector high-rise buildings. You would assume by looking at that company I just made up, Oh, guy's a high-rise company. If in the picture I got hanging on chairs, you know, cleaning or something, instantly we're like, oh, that's a high-rise company. That makes sense. Just like if you have a different logo that is fun or soft, right? The text is soft, the logo is soft, the wording is soft, the everything, the feeling is different than the cold, hard, industrial version. And I'll tell you, you may be in an area where your companies and competitors around you are say it's um, John's Window Cleaning, Tom's Window Cleaning, you know, that kind of thing. And then another company that's called, you know, XYZ, you know, window cleaning or or something more industrial versions of you feel like the company that's called John's window cleaning that's one person right hey, it's some guy kind of part-time he's probably slower you know he's going to be slow to do his thing like that's where your brain is going in the same part is that if it's industrial where does your brain go for that if you're called um I'm in a town called Mooresville. If you're called uh, Mooresville Window Cleaning, which I never have seen one, but maybe that's your company. I apologize. I'm not talking specifically about you. But say you have the town name in it. You have a hometown feel, right? But if you're called Mooresville Window Cleaning and the town next to you is called Smithsville, well... Is somebody in Smithsville going to call Morris or Mooresville window cleaning? Yeah, you're like, well, of course, like it's close, right? But yes, but you're seeming local to that. So now then you go, okay, well, I 
do stuff in the whole state. I'm in North Carolina. I'm called North Carolina Window Cleaning. Great. Well, now what happens when somebody on the coast calls you? It's three-hour drive. I'm like, oh, I just assumed like, right? So understand that the name and the logo and all of this branding thing say something to the customer. They always say something to the customer, even if you don't think they do right? It could be where you're cleaning. It could be how you're cleaning. It could be, you know, where your values are. It could be all of that stuff. And I'm not saying go ahead and rename your company because your name exists. But the branding is the overall look and feel of the company from name to logo to colors to schemes to... Now, if your company is, you know, um, Planet First or Mother Nature's Genuine Cleaning Company, your vibe is green, granola, they don't use chemicals, they probably aren't wearing deodorant. Maybe that's the thing that they're talking about, right? Now, I know you're looking at this as like, well, yeah, this is I mean, it's all their stuff, not me. But understand, this is how somebody looks at your company, too. Always. If I said my company is called mother nature's gentle touch window cleaning you assume knowing what you do probably that i use water fed but if i showed up and said we clean everything with acids as harsh of chemicals as we can get we're just gonna get a better clean with it you'd be like what huh like because your perceived notion is that i'm a green company and all that right that whole part came from the name came from the logo, came from the whatever. An interesting thought. This is just a big, bigger scheme. But uh, there's something called 2.0, and it's basically a vectored image. Vectored images is like, a, say, a single color image. Um, if you have a logo, I don't really have anything near me that is. But um, anyway, oh, look. One interesting piece to that is that you have... No companies out there, for the most part, that their logo is like a factory with stuff coming out of their exhaust. It's like smoke, right? It's all one color, so you can't tell if it's smoke or steam, but usually if there's a factory and a logo, there's nothing coming out of the smokestack. And the reason is, is factories make something, right? You can tell it's they're making, it's a manufacturing company. That's why it's in the logo. But if you put smoke coming out of the smokestack, they're like, it's a dirty company. This is not a real picture of my, my warehouse or my factory or any of that stuff, but you take that into consideration. Now, all these pieces come back into the branding itself, right? Every other piece gets into the branding of your company. And before I get into that, I got a shameless plug I forgot to do actually last week, but shameless plug. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and the way that I make money to live and to buy very uh, large quantities of hair gel uh, people always uh, joke about is by putting orders in. And when I put your order in, not only does it absolutely make my day because we do I mean, hundreds and hundreds of orders. I mean, just Monday alone, we sent out like 715 orders or something. Uh, anyway, so I see all those all day long coming and I see everybody's name and every time I see a name come in, I'm like, ah, oh, I know who they are, right? I wanna be the person who puts your orders in, so shameless plug uh, is that I wanna put your orders in. So let me do that. Just shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Yes, my texts are working again. That was awful. Yes, you can call me, 862-312-2026. Um, any of those things, I would love, absolutely love to get that in for you. Um, just tell me it's in the cart or tell me what I can get you. But that's my shameless plug. Um, thank you in advance. High five. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, get yourself a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Of course, the new revamp is out with sticker sheets, always. But the new revamp in just the feel and the, 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 the goodness of everything. Man, so stinking good. Uh, I really, really hope that you guys um, go out there and take a look. But it's awcmag.com. Go get a subscription. It's $69. It's like 45 minutes of your time. 
for an entire year. Support the industry, be amazing, comes to your door, get the stickers, you know the drill. Anyway, back to branding. Now with branding, a piece of this, again, we're talking overall branding. We've talked a little on logos and names and all that stuff. But the overall piece is that what we do is cleaning things. Our job is to clean things, right? So if we're pressure washing, we're cleaning siding, uh, facade, brick, flooring, roofs. If we're cleaning windows, windows, tracks, sills, frames, screens, all of those things. So if your image doesn't just show clean, your branding doesn't really give that vibe of clean, then it's not working. And I'll get back to like the actual brand, but think about when the brand is actually seen. Your website always can look a certain way. It should have new pictures, high res pictures, legitimate real pictures, not you know pictures you found off the inter inter internet that have nothing to do with your company and they're just stock images. But it has to be real. That's your image. What are those pictures showing? Well, it's of me cleaning. Well, of course, I know you clean windows. But like, are there pictures of all of your staff? If everybody's together next to your truck, everybody's like, well, that's a bragging picture. No, it shows them that you're big enough to handle something. If it's just you, then you take a picture with your family and they show that you're a family man, small business, right? What is your image? What are you putting out there? And that can change over time. But on the same side is that, what happens when somebody gets a business card of yours or a flyer or a door hanger or your truck pulls up? What if your logo, uh, the wrap is on your vehicles that are kind of peeling? You're like, yeah, but it's expensive. But if you show up and your truck is rusty, if it's dirty, if you open it and there's cups falling out and there's papers on your dashboard and your, your vinyl graphics are faded or chipping, you're not a clean company. I instantly, subliminally do not trust you to clean my house because you can't keep your own stuff clean. Understand that. That is absolute reality. So it's not even the brand, but how your brand is presented that matters. I had a uh, competition once and uh, I mean... Truly, you know, any way that you're doing business is great. I'll tell you. But this guy, he was, I thought, trying to start this company. He would show up. Um, he would only do the jobs when he could get on the bus the same way. Cool. He's got hustle. He would show up with an Aldi bag, which uh, if you don't know Aldi, it's like a discount grocery store thing kind of thing. But grocery store plastic bag with all his stuff. And he would show up at either route. And he'd carry this bag around and he'd dump all the stuff out on, on one of the tables in like a restaurant and he'd just start cleaning. And I thought, man, this guy is just starting off and he's just doing everything wrong. Like he shows up, I just instantly, all I can think of is he's just cheap. Like, I mean, he, he, he could put a better persona out there. His branding could be better. That would in turn make him more money, which means he wouldn't have to take the bus, which means he could have a legitimate company. Well, I found out, too, he'd been doing it for, like, 15 years. And that's just it. That was it. He, that was that was him. He'd go around, and then when he didn't show up for a job, they would drop him, and he'd find somebody else. And he'd try to get people on the bus route, and he didn't have any, like, mental issues. He just was kind of like, that was it. It's like, oh, man. Well, my head, I thought, I'm going to a company like this. How do I make this a company? How do I improve this branding? Is but He didn't care. He's like, ah, guy, I'm a guy that cleans the windows. That was it. You got nothing extra in your experience with him than that. So he instantly, in your head, was the cheapest guy. You'd find somebody else if he, you know, somebody else came in cheaper. You didn't expect him to be there on time or even do halfway better job, but he was cheap. Well, without branding, he was branding. That's an extreme, I know. But you're putting out the same thing. One of the most mind-blowing things about, especially our industry, but I just know this, is I look at logos and, and branding and, I mean, you know, I do uh, private stuff with people too that I've dealt with people for years. We've, we've been talking every single week. And every week, uh, by the way, somebody put this out there that I was somehow exaggerating, but 
Um, every week I talk to over 100 different window cleaning companies. And if you don't think that's true, um, I literally, uh, I could talk to 50 different, probably more than that, even on a Monday. Like I average, you know, uh, 18 to 23 hours of phone calls every week. I am on live chat for uh, 26 hours in two days. I am um, on phones basically uh, eight hours a day, five days a week. You know, I'm available. And uh, text messages. You guys know this if you've watched the show, but last month I did uh, 6,066 text messages with people. Those are real numbers, by the way. I, I talk to a lot of companies. So when I say these things, this is just me talking, but this is like as a grand thing. So don't think I'm talking about you specifically. But so many people put together brands and window cleaning for some reason, there's a lot of blue. We see a lot of blue, okay? No big deal. That's just what's in our industry. A lot of people do water droplets. You've seen the picture, you know, it's like, well, lids, water droplets, that kind of thing. They have super sudsy windows and a squeegee one across. Like these are common things you see. But that content was never focused towards the avatar. Your avatar is who's buying your service, right? Think about this. Just, just if you haven't yet, the avatar is incredibly important to know who wants to buy your business because that's who you're selling to. But your avatar is probably a woman, probably. 45 to, you know, 68, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, you are more than likely going to have uh, teenage kids or kids that are out of the house, a lot of college age kids, right? Maybe the husband plays a lot of golf. Maybe they both do. Maybe they like motorcycles. Maybe they have a boat, whatever your avatar is. So if, by the way, interesting enough, window cleaning is a male-dominated cleaning industry. Every other cleaning industry is female-orientated, maid service and janitorial and all that's usually always female-orientated. But for some reason, window cleaning is male-oriented. And you see that when it comes to logo designs and things and stuff. And you see these like, you know, rough, these logos that are like, yeah, this is, yeah. You know, Viking window cleaning. And it's like, I know that that's what we like. But I'm selling to a woman most of the time. And I'm selling to a middle-aged woman who probably has a white forerunner and probably uh, wears yoga, yoga, yoga pants and likes Lululemon. Probably drinks Starbucks. They, you know, probably have a Stanley. Like whoever that person is, understand all these little weird things. This is who we're selling to, and our branding is made for stuff we like. Blue, water droplets, foamy. What about this? I know you are a manly man who owns a manly company, but if pink was somebody's favorite color, especially a middle-aged woman, maybe, then wouldn't you create something that would entice them to want to hire you or look into you. So colors, schemes, stuff, like we're all very hard at what we like, but then when you go back to it, there's stuff like the color, the pinks and, and softer images and uh, more emotional kind of images. Those are the things that we could be doing, but we don't. Most of us don't. When it comes to especially uh, our window cleaning companies, when you look at logos, they're just very, uh, driven towards something specific, right? If again, if I'm a horse window cleaning, I got this like, you know, um, you know, cartoon image of a horse and the horse is probably like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not really my avatar. My person isn't really, you know, if I was horse window cleaning, it'd probably be better if it was more like a little, like a My Little Pony type horse. And I know you guys are stewing right now, like what? Why, how possibly is he saying this? I'm not going to have a My Little Pony as a logo. I'm not saying that. 
I'm just saying it would make more sense if that's who we're connecting to. And if 51% of your customer base comes from a woman, that is your avatar. So don't say, well, if I went you know, too soft, then the guys wouldn't call me. Well, they still would because the ladies are calling you when you have these super tough stuff, right? But there's so many pieces to this puzzle that when people look at something, they don't go for the brand as a whole or the message. They just go like, oh, this is cool. I like this. Your branding says something to the people that you want it to say something to. So if you're looking or changing or whatever, it has to say something to those people. Branding is everything. That is your logo. But it's the color scheme on everything you have. It is the um, font. I always tell people, pick three fonts. Three. You have a headline, so it could be big. You have a smaller one and a smaller one. Just three fonts. Those three fonts are the only thing you ever use. You have a color scheme. My color scheme is blue and orange. Those are the only colors you ever use. Uh, white and uh, black are the uh, uh, inner, those aren't colors technically, right? Uh, but they also work. So if you're blue and yellow, you can put white in there. White is the absence of color. Black is the absence of light, right? Anyway, whatever. So with all of those, all of those side things and pieces and notes and stuff, no matter what you do, even if you're trying to change your brand now, a real company always has a brand. If you're doing that, the most important thing, the most important thing you could possibly do is to be uniform. That again, three fonts, color scheme. Say you have um, a style of image. All of those things are always, always the same. That means your envelopes look like that. They're printed that way. Your business cards, your door hangers, your website, your ads on Facebook, your ads on AdWords, your EDDM, your everything is based off of that. And I'll tell you a secret that you probably uh, know, so it's not really a secret, but I'm trying to make it sound impressive. <laughs> but when a company looks at something, you can go on to say like a Canva or any of these ones and find what's called palettes. And a palette is colors that go well together. And you can get a palette with colors. You will only pull colors from that palette, only, because that is your feel. And that is now every ad. Every ad looks the same. And you could go ahead and for, say, the year of 2024, create one really good ad. Have a designer create it. Don't do it yourself. If you are doing it yourself, ask a bunch of people, take actual change and do that. But if you can't, a big ad. Out of that big ad, every other ad comes from that. I do iterations of that ad for Facebook, small. Instagram, square. EDDM, elongated, right? Website is that same feel. Uniformity is where branding comes from. When you look at Coca-Cola, what's Coca-Cola's color? Yes, exactly. Coca-Cola is red. Even to the point a lot of these places will copyright or trademark their color. You know your favorite football team's colors. They're always those colors. McDonald's, two colors. Tell me what colors they are. Yeah, exactly. They will only ever use those two colors in the majority of their ads. When it's a solid color ad, it's got the background of red. Why? Because their logo is yellow. When you look at all of those big companies, they have a scheme. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go out there and make sure that every push fitting and connection and rubber and channel all is the same color because that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the image of the brand outside, the face of it. If blue's your color, which again, it's completely up to you, probably is blue. There's versions of, right? Make sure that you know what your fonts, your 
your colors, your schemes, your everything are, and make sure that it crosses every platform so that your branding comes across on point. And when people see it, they instantly can understand that it's the same company they saw about something else. When you flip flop and you change things and you change the actual looks and branding, then they can't really tell which ones you were. If they see something that looks almost exact same, they're like, oh yeah, I saw these guys. If the trucks look exactly like the website, they're like, oh yeah, I saw these guys driving. Familiarity in your head means trust. That's just what happens. So make sure your branding's on point. It's an interesting topic. By the way, if any of you out there uh, have My Little Pony as your uh, logo, please do let me know. I would love to uh, see that. But you know the drill. My name is Jersey, and I'm a rep from windowcleaner.com, the greatest place to buy window cleaning supplies, and I want to be your rep. Truly, genuinely, that's how I make my cheddar is I put orders in. So please let me know. Give me a shout. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Uh, call me or text me. Text me is even better. Text me what you want or text me your cart is saved. Little button says save this cart. Yo, Jersey, my cart is ready. And that's it. I get credit. It costs you not one penny extra. And I can continue living on this planet. And that would be really uh, pretty pretty nice. Uh, do that. Also, again, American Window Cleaner Magazine. You know I talk about it all the time, but it's phenomenal. Man, I love a paper magazine anyway, uh, but it's so good. So good. Go and check that out too, awcmag.com. But more importantly, until next week, make sure you have a My Little Pony logo. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.